The Panama Canal joins the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. First, there's a three-level lock system that lifts the ship 27 meters to the man-made Gatun Lake. From there, it's 82 kilometers through the narrow canal. Another lock awaits them at the end, which will take the trapper onto the expanse of the Pacific Ocean. For a mega transport like ours, such an excursion was impossible until very recently. The canal is over 100 years old and was designed for the largest ships at that time. Maximum width, 32.3 meters. For behemoths like the Trapper, that's not enough. Canal authorities began construction on newer, larger lock systems in 2007. Since its opening in 2016, ships belonging to the so-called Neo-Panamax class can now transit the canal, and that includes the Trapper. But even though the new lock chambers are 55 meters wide, for the Trapper, this means not even 10 meters clearance on either side. And in the dark, no less. On day 29 of the mega transport, the trapper is at the Atlantic side entrance to the canal on time at four o'clock in the morning, Agua Clara. To manage the lock chambers, the crew now has local support. Harbor pilot Robert L. Schnack and his team are specialized in guiding oversized transport vessels safely through the locks. And it works like this. The man-made Panama Canal is 27 meters above sea level. To get the mega transport up this high, it uses three lock chambers, like steps. When the ship gets to the first chamber, the chamber is pumped full of water to raise the trapper up by nine meters. The process is repeated for a second and third time, each raising the ship by nine meters. The difficulty? The captain and pilot need to position the ship perfectly in the middle of the lock chamber. Because during the pumping process, the engine must be stopped, which means there's no chance to make corrections. Here we go. Chamber one of three. The challenge is maneuvering the vessel straight through. In order to steer the course on the high seas, the trapper uses an automatic steering system. But while going through the locks, the ship has to be maneuvered manually, as required by law. For the entire duration of the canal transit, the pilot gives the orders to the captain. But Captain Su still has the last word. Starboard 10, please. Starboard 10. We've got uh, starboard 20. Starboard 20. Each command decides whether the ship will keep its course or crash into the wall. We have to hold the ship steady like this without any deviation. Not to deviation too much. Stop engine. Stop engine. At least we are lucky there is no wind. The predicted bad weather has not arrived. After 30 minutes, the trapper is in the first lock chamber, but there is still a palpable tension on the bridge. Mr. Pilot, if we can pick up the slack not on, yet, on the stairs, not yet now. Huh? Let's okay. wait until the starboard side is ready and then we And, and we'll synchronize to heavy. Okay, Thank you. Now, the engine is stopped, and Captain Su's hands are tied. Dock workers secure the ship with ropes so that it doesn't move during the pumping process. And then, off we go. Within eight minutes, the trapper is raised nine meters. Now the path is clear to chamber number two.
Until now, everything seems to have run smoothly. But just before the next stop, the ship comes dangerously close to the lock wall. Now every command has to be perfect. No mistakes, no excuses. Half to stop. No, no. Stop totally. Mitchie. Fortunately, that slip of the tongue, quickly corrected, went unpunished. Not all do. The chamber fills with water from the Gatun Lake, raising the trapper to 18 meters. Thirty to forty ships pass through the locks every day. This requires the services of almost 300 pilots. They get additional support from 36 tugboats, which help the ships to keep the tight course. It's a major effort, and therefore a major expense. The cost of a single passage for a mega transport like ours? Up to 400,000 euros. Now, just the third and last lock chamber to go. Once again, for the captain and pilot, this takes razor-sharp concentration. Stop engine. Stop engine. Stop engine. Bow to port. Bow to port. Stop. 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 While the lock system pumps the trapper up one last time, the pilot and captain have the time to focus on one final and most important task, guiding the 200-meter-long mega transport out of the narrow lock system and into the canal unscathed. The trapper is now 27 meters above sea level the level of the Panama Canal. To safely reach it, Captain Su needs to bring the trapper out of the lock in as straight a line as possible. Oh. To do this, he uses the yellow line as a guide. So that the rear does not swing out, the ship must always move parallel to the line. On command from captain and pilot, the tugboats pull the monster through. But halfway out, what happens is this. Do you see the ship is now very close to this critical point? Now we have to bow half starboard. Port 20. Less than two meters separate the trapper from the solid stone wall. You see? Easy to indicate. Okay, Mitchie. Third officer, is the back out of the lock? It has just gone out. Stop or 10. I repeat, it has just gone out. Great. So we are safe in the back corner? Are we safe? Exactly, we're safe. Okay. Mitchie, bow half to starboard. Mitchie, that's starboard. Mr. Pilot, ship has stand clear of this corner. Okay, good. Thank you. They did it. After three nerve wracking hours, the ship and its cargo remain undamaged and can continue their journey through the Panama Canal. Okay. We're gonna let go the tugs for Let go the tug phone we're off. Clear okay. From the lock, so okay. We're free. Totally clear from the lock. Yeah. yeah. The pilot disembarks. Captain Su once again takes full control of his ship. I'm feeling, I'm feeling very happy. happy. And excited. Yeah, absolutely. 
Today, we can pass the new Panama Canal because I had a very good cooperation with the pilots. For the mega transport and its extremely valuable cargo, it is now time to traverse 82 kilometers on one of the world's most iconic and important waterways. The transit takes all of nine hours. Traveling through the Panama Canal saves the ship an impressive three weeks of travel time, which you would otherwise need to get from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. No wonder that annually, an excess of 15,000 commercial ships travel through it. Since the expansion, the annual cargo loads have doubled to 600 million tons. That's 6% of all maritime freight traffic in the world. Which includes our mega transport. And even after 20 years of professional experience, it's still a special event for Captain Su. I am very proud to be captain on this vessel, and I'm excited to experience the Panama Canal. The Trapper is scheduled to reach Australia and New Zealand in three weeks. But to continue the journey, the ship still has to reach the level of the Pacific Ocean. At the end of the canal, Su and his crew face another three-chamber lock system, the Kakoli locks. The task, lower the ship by 27 meters. Instead of stepping up, now we step down. Based on the experience from this morning, it should be no problem. And after an extremely eventful day, the trapper is one step closer to its goal.